श्री श्रीमद भक्ति वेदांत नारायण लीला कथा ने सुधाक्ष श्रीकृष्ण पादाबृदयृदि चैतन्य लीलामृत सार सारम नारायण सततम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि श्री गौरव हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम Let me offer millions of blessings to Lotus Feet of Love. Rudev, Rupan, Udur, Varga, Nam, and Ishka Santa, and Ishka. And all Vartamana uh, Bhuta Bhavish. Present, past, future, most of us. Tavad, Dandavad, Pranam. Vansha, Kalpataru, Vyasha, Krupa, Sindhu, Devetra, Patitana, Pavani, Pyo, Vaishnava, Pyo, Nama, Nama, Ham. सॉरी फॉर द डिले टुडे इज अमावलिया स्पेशल न्यू मून डे पितृपक्ष लास्ट डे सो लॉट ऑफ पीपल कमिंग अदर डे एन आई एम सॉरी फॉर द डिले बट नाउ टुडे इज देर आई थिंक सम ऑफ यू माइट हैव क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली सम क्वेश्चन like um, pitru paksha what we should do right our uh vaishnavas huh? how we should do you know so mm mm-hmm. the way it can be done is many people ask here the way we do morning agnivatra we do in their name and that is chanting only huh? uh, and then we offer uh, prasadam uh, bhoga to bhagwan prasadam huh? after prasadam offer that to that person actually to not that person but anyway is photo will be there and then that after kirtan bhajan then we offer it to the uh, oh. and we also tell look the real pitrupaksha is to follow a cause and offer the fruit of that to them is for father so that is real huh? uh but sometimes you have to do this also huh? that way their faith will increase and then they will also get feel of satisfaction because they have a runa you know indebtedness to their forefathers they are somewhere 
Now, many questions is, is being asked. Now, when we do that, it will really reach them or not? This is one question, right? We are doing it, Pitrupak. Does it reach them or not? How does it reach? Right? So, what does this Shastra say? Um, how do we know where they are? <laughs> right? So, uh, then, Masya Purana, in Masya Purana, huh? in, there is one question asked. Uh, they, have, they have asked a question, when the Brahmanas, Vaishnavas, huh? they eat, right? Like the way they do is, they do this and they feed a Brahmana, Vaishnava. Like um, Advaita Acharya, you remember? Telling how he invited all the Brahmanas and they did, huh? they did all the yajnas and all that. Then the final that thing is offered to main Brahmana, who is supposedly very knowledgeable, very uh, expert in Shastra and all that, senior. It is a very respectable thing. So they were all thinking, oh, because they are, everybody knows Advaita Charya is not simple. Very well known, Shastra. So he will call me, he will call me, he will call me. They are all thinking. <laughs> now, what happened? Um, the Advaita Charya did not call anybody. He went outside and there was Aridas Thakur. Another stock, he got hold of his hand and then he was literally dragging him. <laughs> he said, no, no, I will not come inside. No, no, I know he must come. <laughs> like that. You know, he's dragging. Because Arida Staku is very simple, you know, and uh, he does not consider himself as Vaishnava. He thinks he is still untouchable. That's why he never went to the inside. Jagannath temple. Neither Rupa and Sanatana, even though they were exalted Brahmana, but because they served Muslims, they said no. They don't want to even touch the shadow of a Brahmana. Pujaris who are serving Jagannath, you know, up to that level. What an exalted way. So, and yes, great Brahmana. And yes, you know, of course, Advaita himself is a great Brahmana. <laughs> Vaishnava also. He's dragging, <laughs> and then he's crying, leave me, leave me, leave me. <laughs> then he put him on the respectable, most respectable seat, and then offered him, you know, he should take. Now what are the questions? And all the Brahmanas just walked out. But when they walked out, they are, they are thinking, wait a minute. Advaita Chari is not foolish. He knows Shastra. That they know. Why did he do this? You know, they were telling, they went outside saying, we will paishkar, we will, in future we have nothing to do with you. You know, no, none of us will come to your house or you will come to our house. <laughs> like that. But outside going, they were thinking, wait a minute, he is not, he knows all Shastra. Why did he do that? There must be some reason. So someone came back and then discussed with him. And he glorified the power, you know, the Vai Vaishnava. Same way, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati one time, uh, Bhakti, you know, Thakur was actually very, in his last days, you know, he is almost by in mukha, meaning completely chanting. He doesn't want to talk. At that time, there was an invitation came about there's a conference 
on Brahmanas. Uh, greatness of Brahmanas or Vaishnavas, like that, you know. Brahmanas. So they were inviting Bhaktivinoda. And uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakuri said, I cannot. But is there any person who can go and convince? Who is Vaishnava? So then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was, was still a young at that side. Of, of course, he is spiritual, it's not young, old. <laughs> you know, he's always spiritual. Okay? But for others, it seems like Monday night, oh, he's still growing up. Or he is becoming old. But it is only our perception. But in reality, he does not get old or disease or anything. Okay. All our Vaishnava Acharyas, pure or like that. So, um, he said, I will go. And they were very, almost all famous. Brahmins and Vaishnavas were also there, entire India, from Vrindavan, everywhere, you know, many Shastris and all that, learned people. So there he presented first day, glorified Brahmana, because scripture glorified Brahmana. Krishna himself, he said, I eat through the mouth of Brahmana. So then they were all happy. Wow. <laughs> Then next day he told about Vaishnavas. After hearing all this, it looks like puny. Brahmanas is <laughs> puny. But because he's, he's thorough, first he glorified so much, and uh, second day, and they, you know, they were uh, amazed by his auditory thing and his knowledge. <laughs> so, uh, so same way here, Advaita Acharya and Brahma. Now, uh, so through Vaishnavas, uh, so same way, uh, like other day, I might have told you this story. But uh, this question comes, this is Masya Purana. Huh? So, uh, how the Brahmanas eat and thing, or the thing that you put in fire, huh? how it will go to the subtle body. You know? um, so the question comes, why? Because after death, the Atma has taken rebirth. So they would have been in some other body, huh? somewhere. So, right, this is the question. How it will reach that body? For that, the, the answer is also there. Huh? So, how? Vasu, Rudra, and Aditya. They are Pitru Devatas. Now, there are many different kind of demigods, Devatas, right? Pitru Devatas. Huh? They are like Rudra, Aditya, Vasu. Huh? They come actually. Hmm? And they will deliver that through them. Huh? So that's one, one way. Huh? So, uh, Actually, there is one incident, one Vaishnava in Kerala, you know, they had a thing. They can call the previous forefathers. You know, so they were also able to talk with them. So in one case, what happened was they were looking for a match, for a daughter, something like that. And he wanted to ask his father, who is the best match? But his father had left his body. So the Pitru Paksha was over, and there is a means they establish a communication. And uh, 
they brought that brought that person and is communicating you know, through this person huh? he's asking how are you oh, okay uh, you know this is the thing uh, we are looking for a match he said oh such and such a person is a good match and then you know i came the other day to trubal are you happy yes i came the day i accepted what you offered i am very happy No. and then in this this what i heard huh? so uh the devatas you know through devatas they become the medium huh? this pitru devatas uh and they deliver they know where they are huh? and they deliver that or uh Mm. Also, what we offer in the fire sacrifice also reaches in uh, like um, nectar, pruna, boga, gali, you know, grass or whatever we offer uh, here like that. It changes into that form and they reach there. so uh they they whatever um, yoni meaning species they have born into huh? so uh see see how see they are explaining this in the masya purana adhya 19 shloka 3 to 9 how when we offer this in the agnivatra yagna how it reaches first the the rice that we offer in the fire turn in the form of fire huh? and a subtle layer uh it will touch the subtle body of the uh, pitrus huh uh uh through the power of the mantras huh? it will okay uh that's why mantras yeah cast species acha fir dama rai in check there ek bol um monday monday tuesday wednesday ke bol na dal sakte na इनको पूछा हो वेडनेस डालने से हो जाएगा परम गुरुदेव वेन वी से पंच महाभूत है राइट यू मस्ट हाउ this akash sadal huh? akash then air fire water and earth right this five pancha mahabhuta five element huh? great element uh, the akash no sky the space huh? see the problem is in english the actual equivalent term is difficult like we say archa vigraha there is no equivalent of it english has alphabets of 26 sanskrit has 52 dama so you can see the limitation na ah huh? na you cannot spell in english anand anand you can say ana na you know it is not there. like that so uh, similarly the problem anyway archa uh, vigraha you know the, they say no idols there are so many idols in god <laughs> that's why they catch anyway archa, so it cannot be trans see this is how we should be 
okay we cannot translate this this is not an nearest appropriate but it cannot be transferred and then we have to keep this purity understand otherwise purity will be lost because we use that word you know idol you know what else is there murti again english there no right <laughs> you know murti you know archa vigraha you know is not there is a problem so they catch on that now so he says param gurudev bhakti presentation uh, panchi karna he says panchi karna what does it mean when we say akash of course you know the akash that's a space you know is a, is a container understand container first the it's like a house container containing everything so the space is you uh, cannot see wow. imagine that it is it is actually gross element but still we cannot see how subtle how sukshma it is how subtle again lack of you know terms huh? so tiny it will pass through electron the space is also element okay material element understand space is an a material element but it is so small then you know it will pass through electron you can imagine that electron will not know electron is actually made out of space you know, transformation of space everything is a transformation of space but it is cannot be visible no weight nothing and how it will the other thing gets weight this is an amazing thing huh? suksh you know it's so subtle and then the space transformation of that with the with the mercy of the lord it becomes air okay more gross little gross air is also not visible to our eyes you understand but it's still good then again transformation of that is teja light okay and that teja light turns into water water turns into earth you know so and the, when we say earth earth means not completely solid it has 50% earth and remaining 50 uh 25 no tall and half 12 12.5% of akash space 12.5% of yeah 12.5% of fire 12.5% of water this is panchikarna 4 plus 1 that main element 50% and remaining 4 is like uh, half of the quarter no uh right so like that so this is a, so earth also contain the space what i'm saying that's why when we say the space the quality of the space is sound understand right sound what is the quality of the air next one element is touch and also sound understand and the fire sound touch and then form then the water sound touch form and then taste uh no the rasa huh? and then the earth is sound touch form taste and also smell you know this five comes up so so the subtle quality is also there because this panchikarna you know so that way when the when these things go offering to the pitrus it will go like that you know in a subtle form and then the the pitru devadas huh, carry that and they deliver and 
uh, and they get the benefit. Hmm? And the, you might say, no, the another question is, <laughs> uh, they will be hungry for so long once a year. <laughs> right. So, but the do it right. Uh, that's why it's important, you know. Because see, uh, the truth, suppose they are, you know, the one thing, like the devata's time is, our time is different. Our 365 days is one day for them, you know. So, our 365 days is one. Like uh, Uttrayana huh? is uh, for them daytime. Dakshinayana is nighttime for them. So, even though once you offer, they are getting like every day in their time scale, right? So, like that we can reconcile, you know, uh, reconcile that. Now, so much for that. Uh, but there stays as a Vaishnava, you can also do this, there is nothing wrong. But he offer the prasadam, you know. Uh, prasadam is spiritualized. You know, this is the this is the question actually, very interesting question. The um, the Vishnu Dutas are explaining very subtle form of bhakti, like a. Uh, We go, they said, we, we went through this and then we will again, uh, this is the point we are talking about. Tatapi karya preneva pariharaya idrujaha palantareshu kamasya vaikunta tivirodina vaikunta tapti virodina. Even so, because any extraneous desires, extraneous desires, right, poses a great obstacle to attaining. Vaikuntha. In order to remove the disease of material desires in the heart, okay? material desires in the heart, it is necessary to perform that ninefold devotional process with a loving devotional mood. Huh? This we talk about. So there is the extraneous desires, huh? how to remove. The Vaikuntha Parsa say, however, it is crucial to execute Navada Bhakti with Prema. Navada Bhakti, the mood of pure love. Why? Why we should do this Navada Bhakti? Because it will remove worldly desires. Huh? Which, are, which will remove worldly desires. We have so many worldly you know, desires. Getting a property, you know, so, so many, you know, uh, other than pleasing Krishna and the Guru, uh, Vaishnava, you know, all others. Most of the time, you know, they are coming in, bombarding, you know, by. So, so, which are opposed to the goal of achieving residence in Vaikuntha. You know, so as long as we have these desires, we're not going there. <laughs> okay, because we have these desires of the connected with material world. Oh, okay, we'll be stable. But how to remove all that? 
Prema, which is blissful by nature, has no other objective. Whereas devotion to the Lord, love, there is no other objective. And thus, there is no other objective than please to please Him. Because He is eternal. You know. That we have that, then it will remove, it will destroy all extraneous desires, which are obstacles in entering Vaikuntha. You know, this is why we do this. Now is the bhakti. So actually, the desire for anything other than residence in Vaikuntha is a sign of disease art. You know, we saw that. You know? Desire for anything other than residence, other than residence in Vaikuna, meaning I want to serve the Lord. If we, other than that, any other desire is a, is a state of disease. Okay. <laughs> no? So, such desire ignite the heart with the fever of anxiety. Because, see what happens? If you have a disease, then you get anxiety, fear, or you know. And it and if one enjoys the results of his material desire, you know, you know, so, so many things of this world, it, then faces grave obstacles blocking him from Vaikuntha. You know, if you are enjoying tendency of things connected with this material world. Then you will have more uh, blockage because you yourself are blocking yourself. To go there, you should not have any connection, any of this, no attachment to anything of this world. You know, as simple as. So, uh, See, there are three areas. One is material world, then the borderline, and the spiritual world. Huh? In one side. In this side of the world is what? Senses, you know, material world. You know, fulfilling desire. You know, so many things are in our time. Bakery. You know, tongue. <laughs> you know, big bazaar, you know, big supermarket. Oh, so you go to the supermarket, what is this? So many items, you know, one after the other, you know, millions. Imagine carry a baby, you know, little. Mommy, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And baby wants entire supermarket. <laughs> Mom will have a tough time, <laughs> you know. So um, it doesn't end, you know. Even if you give even <laughs> even hundred items, still no, so many items. So this is the unquenching, you know, disease <laughs> material. So. Don't think my desires will go away by if I have few items like <laughs> I can never do. It. You know? It's like putting up the this example, give another example. Putting out the fire with the ghee. I'll pour ghee and then get rid of fire. What happens? It will even grow more. <laughs> you know. Um, it says there are two things in this world which will never say no. I have enough. Please, enough. I don't want any. Okay. How many chapatis you can eat? No. 10, 20, 30, 100. <laughs> no. So, where are the, the two things? It says Shastra. Fire. Fire will say, enough ghee. Oh, I had so much ghee. Please, one kilo, the, you know, 10 kg, 10 pound, 100 pound, one ton. More and more you do, okay, this more, bigger fire. Never ending, okay. It has no, in the dictionary, there is nothing like enough. 
The other one is karma. Okay, lust, never satisfied. More and more lust, unending. That's why the way to get over this lust and this thing is like not satisfying that. Oh, little bit, maybe it'll get satisfied. No, oh, more. <laughs> it's like scratching, you know. You scratch, even though you get, um, you know, blood and this and that, and you like to scratch more. And <laughs> you know, so uh, that's not the way. That's why danda, Abst abstinence from that. No, not yielding. And how do you do? See, the desires of material thing, there's nothing wrong in that. Okay, today I had a feeling. Nothing wrong. Okay. There is nothing wrong in that. Don't get wrong with that, what I'm saying. It has to be changed, that all, into the service of Krishna. That's all. See, service to the Krishna has perverted and then making us, you know, Attachment or desiring for the objects of this world. That the same desire to serve Krishna, I can take this. Out. That is perverted reflection of that is what is we are you know, in this world, material desires. Okay, nothing else. So the material desire is nothing but by itself is not wrong. We try to understand. Don't try to minimize this service, you know. Desires of this world, you cannot. What you do is try to increase service to the Lord. Then what happens? All the desires of this material world get transformed into desire to serve Him more and more and more. The more you do, then you will have less and less attachment or attraction for the objects of this material world. If you increase that, this will decrease. If you are struggling to decrease this, this, without increasing that spiritual, then you will lose a... Uh, understand? <laughs> Not possible. So, and the, what is the tatastha? Where we say, nothing. Oh, no, I don't want to belong to this world or to that world. That is called liberation. Understand? <laughs> that is what liberation. Nothing. You lose yourself. You know, how can you be without doing anything? Understand? It's like a doctor giving you uh, what you call injection. You uh, you know you don't feel pain or you don't feel you are living or dead. You know you become unconscious. Anesthesia. You know, you become honest. Breathing is going on, everything is going on, but you don't feel anything. Like a deep sleep. And what is that? So, either you are not dead nor living. Okay? That's what liberation is. <laughs> so, but by, by nature, we are not dead. Understand? Very powerful. No, very active. Imagine the soul is sleeping. The, the mind is near that. And just by nearing, it is becoming acting. Say it's like this. Imagine a screen, a TV screen, okay? It's a screen, is it not? It's a matter, is it not? The thing is alive. TV screen, is it alive? Is dead or not? It is dead. But with technology, television and all that, imagine, you know, how, how, how mesmerizing. People are running, dancing, this and that. We also take it for real, is it not? We say, oh, look, how nicely they are dancing, this and that. And you take a, you know, stick and hit them. <laughs> You think they will start crying, those people in the TV, you know, on the screen? <laughs> TV will get destroyed, okay? 
nothing will happen to them understand <laughs> so but it looks so real but it is not understand same way our mind and all that you know it is near the soul that's why it as if it is alive you know so many days that imagine if it becomes comes into active how powerful it will be you know how it will brought into me so try to understand the power of thought you know uh, for the power of mind itself we are not using it they say you know 10% 5% still so uh, that's why uh prema however being naturally devoid of material ambition prema to the lord no material ambition huh? bestows bliss in both worlds and is the only means to attain great joy you know who, who is happy in this world not the karmis not the you know or jnanis only devotees <laughs> understand devotees are only one who are happy in this world and they are going to be happy more happier actually in the spiritual world also in the other world huh? so the karmis and jnani they are not, neither happier nor in future unless you turn all these activities into spiritual life unless you make this spiritual life although this bhakti can be obtained anywhere however wherever it is achieved becomes like kuntan the lord is indeed present there. so it can be achieved anywhere and that will be like kun now why do you want to go to then like kunta he says lord is there always huh? whereas here he is there but he is invisible huh? so uh now besides vaikuntha no other place exhibits also other thing is all the varieties of bhakti there countless staunch devotees are resolutely performing such bhakti unhindered by impediments like material time you know there there is no material time it will not bother you in that but here it will bother us huh? but we should know how to transcend it is how material time meaning what past and future you know if you, actually if you focus on just on this time given year it's only present time is it not they are also present time we are also here present but you think present is moving very you know very quickly present. and even though it is present but we are still stuck with the uh, you know either past or future see our mind you know it will it will never let you in the present you know by its nature huh? you never you know thinking you know so many thoughts coming all connected with the past or future not the present okay <laughs> that is the speciality of the mind <laughs> that's why you have to bring in you know bring in hey look you have bothered me so much bro i'll pay obeisances at your lotus feet please please listen uh, let us chant okay you know hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram we say and hear we say and hear then you is like then is like tying up a cow see if you leave the cow what happens it will go here there there, there. after 10 minutes it will be gone couple of kilometer okay <laughs> i have to go for searching uh, so whereas you tie it like you put one uh, wood up piece and then tie it up 
then it will go somewhere there, you know, nowhere else. Same way the mind, okay? It will take you to the hell and the heaven, okay? <laughs> speed of mind, understand? It is even faster than the speed of light, okay? You can go around, make you alive. So, you have to tie it up, how to the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Rama Rama. How tying means what? You have to hear. Just saying is like not tying up. We have the you know rope. You have a thing and then a rope. But if you are not tied up to the cow, what happens? You know, it will do like it comes to know it's not tied up, it will go, it will make one jig like this and then gone. <laughs> okay. So, same way our mind, you know, it will be tied up. How? Oh, hearing through the ear. Okay. If you hear, keep on hearing. Don't hear anything else. If you, if you hear anything else, then it, your tying is not strong enough. Some strong, you know, desire or thought comes. So you forget hearing the knob, you know, you hear something else, <laughs> you know, phone call, this, that, and oh, what is they are talking, you know, what I'm saying, another extra disturbance. You make it sankalpa, no, next half an hour or one hour, please <laughs> keep trying, praying to the Guru Dev, Guru Varga, Vaishnava, holy name. You know, holy name is always with Ekasi, accompanied by Ekasi, Devi and Vidya, Odissi. Okay. Nam is not is, is always accompanied by you know Ekasi Devi and then Vidya. So uh, knowledge, huh? So we pray to them, please. Hello, 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 sorry. Help me in this. So then they will help with their help, you'll be locked up. Then you don't know how the half an hour went, one hour went, just like a second. Locked up. And especially you do before you go to bed. Five minutes, ten minutes, pray. Nothing else. Then you see, you don't know when he went to the sleep and all, all right. All sleep, you will be chanting, and then when you wake up, you will be chanting. Okay. <laughs> so, um, devotion that is endowed with fully blossomed divine love, as seen in Vaikuntha, is not found anywhere else. Because all the residents have their unwavering dedication, their unwavering dedication. Nista for bhakti. Elsewhere it is not so, and obstacles constantly, so many obstacles constantly hinder the execution of bhakti in those places. In particular, in Vaikuntha, the time factor or any other material restriction presents no obstacles, whereas other places are full of such impediments. Because in Vaikuntha, one receives the Association of countless numbers of like minded devotees whose bodies are eternally Satchidananda and who are naturally Rasika, expert in relishing Prema Bhakti. One can automatically perform unhindered worship of the Lord. Therefore, we see that devotees aspire to go there. Then they are full. Then next, next they are telling. These are. This is very nice, actually. They are analyzing bhakti. Specifically, associates of Vishnu, right? Uh, we have Chaturbhuja and you know body. They are telling this Gopakumara, do not think that bhakti is an endeavor of the dull senses, mind and body. Don't think bhakti is a 
डन एंड एवर ऑफ दी माइंड डल माइंड डल सेंसेस डल बॉडी नो बीइंग एटर्नल रियलिटी एंड कंसंट्रेटेड ब्लिस भक्ति इज बियॉन्ड दी मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर एंड दस कैन नॉट बी ग्रास्प्ड बाय दी मटेरियल सेंस सी भक्ति इज बियॉन्ड दी मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर cannot be grasped by material senses so but generally again is a language you know we do we have to practice bhakti you know we say we should practice bhakti so it implies it appears like that in that devotional service is accomplished by human effort right you have to practice bhakti to say that means what oh we have to do some effort right human effort but that is not this to refute that they are telling two shloka beginning here with nija the vaikuntha associate describe the intrinsic nature of bhakti they say devotional service cannot be achieved by the endeavors of the material senses mind and body in addition the limbs of bhakti such as hearing about the lord shravana singing his names kirtan are also not the objects of one sense of hearing sense of speech and so on in other words shravana hearing appears to be function of the ears right shravana hearing is a uh, ears it appears like that kirtana appears function of the tongue smarana is a function of the mind vandana offering of essences is like a function of the body right limbs however in actuality they are saying by kunta parsha the material senses are unable to undertake all the spiritual activities hari krishna understand these activities to be transcendental beyond the material qualities hari krishna pinna bhava ah avada in samachara avada ee aayitu inond ardha kal gante iri ah ah ड्रैवेन अभी आव ना लेजर ओलोग्राम लेजर ओलोग्राम लेजर जवलोग्राम आम लेजर कटिंग आव अद कटिंगु नहीं कटमते गा अवलप सैंड पातल कणुगिणी then you might say what is the nature of bhakti 
So you should know pure devotional service to be the eternal truth and essence of pure joy. So he is elaborating further that bhakti is singular in nature. By the mercy of the Sri Krishna, it manifests in numerous forms, such as Shravana, Kirtana, for the pleasure of the confidential devotees who are transcendental to the mode of nature. He is elaborating this. If that devotional service is transcendental to material qualities, how can the conditioned soul approach it? You know, it is a valid question. If it is transcendental, how conditioned soul can approach it? In reply, Vaikuntha associates speak this. Nirguna. That Nirguna Bhakti or devotion, devoid of material qualities, which is by nature full of eternity, knowledge and bliss. Sachidan manifests by the mercy of Krishna in the heart. It manifests in the heart by the mercy of Krishna. That is, it manifests in pure spirit souls and it sports within them in the form of hearing, chanting and so on. That's why you might have heard when we chant Suddhana, you cannot stop chanting. So, that is an indi indication. Although this bhakti is one in nature, Yekarupa, nevertheless it manifests in many forms, Shravana Kirtana, because Bhagavan wants to increase the wonderful bliss of his confidential servitors. You know, Lord wants taste. No, in other way, no. when the practitioner's heart is completely cleansed by pure discrimination, the nine process of bhakti is poured within that completely purified soul. Only then does the obtain the abode of Sri Hari Vaikuntha. Uh, So, having explained the general characteristic of bhakti in this verse, beginning with Vishuddha, the Vaikuntha associates dialectically establish its transcendental nature by direct and also indirect deliberation. How? The word Vishuddha Viveka, meaning pure intelligence, indicate that the living being becomes living being becomes free from false ego by realizing the idea stated in Bhagavad Gita. Indriyani indriyarteshu vartantaiti dharayan. The living being actually does not do anything. Living being does not do anything. Rather it is his senses that interact with the respective sense objects. Then freed from the False ego, he no longer has to suffer the reactions of his past deeds. When we think I'm the doer, oh I I'm the, I did this, so I want to enjoy. I want I want the you know um entitled for the fruit. See, suppose you put a seed in the tea grows and oh fruits. I put the seed, I took care of water, started. So I'm the owner, I want to see. So, uh, so they are telling if we free from false ego, you know how how do we know that living being actually does not do anything, you know, does not do anything. Rather, it is the senses that interact with their respective sense objects. You know, they are not the doer. Can we design a seed? It needs light, air, water, earth. See, you don't think, no. I took this seed, I was not. <laughs> How the seed formed inside a seed? Put inside earth. 
earth does not belong to me ye water or nothing it grew up seeds and it grew up and the even though it grew up it it did not reduce the weight of the earth right one time we discussed this point right you know every year millions of tons of grains are grown everywhere in the world you know you think the weight of the earth is also decreasing this by the same amount <laughs> no no decrease at all and how it is coming scientists talk a hey, big big thing let, let them answer this question they have the proof they have tried for 10 years they have experimented you know they took a seed put a plant in a big pot 200 kg something like that but and they are putting water water they weighed 10 years and you know, it took big tree was grown up you know the tree itself is like 100 100 kg more than 100 200 kg is like 100 kg another thing you know grew up 100 kg like so uh earth was kind of contain and they weighed they cut off the tree and then root they washed up making sure no earth yeah they weighed is around more than like 100 kg and they found they weighted they weighed the mud again same amount maybe milligram you know different that can be between any error huh? so but 100 kg where milligram you know even if you think milligram where that 100 kg came from not from the earth <laughs> okay so imagine. see the other way around also uh, baby what is the weight of the baby and becomes you know middle age you know so many 30 40 50 kg where that all that weight came from cast away from the earth in in a way directly indirectly so like that you know uh, grains fruits bah, where where it is how it is coming from. so uh, if you meditate on it you will see huh? so that's why we are not the doers huh? that way we can free from false ego and if we become free from false ego then we don't have to suffer from the reactions of the past days when such unalloyed intelligence the living being frees himself from identifying with the body senses and so on he becomes qualified to enter vaikuntha transcendental level at that time bhakti in all our varieties pours in the heart of that jiva hmm? you know so in other words uh, no attachment in this world huh? to this if bhakti to the lord were also to be an activity of the senses like all other mundane activities then it could not be the function of the soul right it is an activity of mundane or like something else it is not an activity of the soul alternatively it may be said that if by knowledge the soul were to be cleansed of the entanglement of activities in the body and senses then the nine process of bhakti like material activities could not be the function of the soul uh, this is because the process of bhakti unlike material activities is not rooted in the living beings false being false ego of being the doer bhakti mercifully spores on our own accord in the soul that is purified of the false ego 
are being the doer. No? So, uh, this way. the Vaikuntha Parsha say, otherwise, if Navada Bhakti were just activity of the mundane senses, you know, if it is, you know, hearing uh, Shravana, you know, Kirtan, you know, material, sense, mundane activity, mundane senses, then the soul were to be cleansed of entanglement of activities with the body and senses through knowledge or wisdom. The process of Navada Bhakti would also be reapproachable like all other mundane activities. Both regular, nitya and occasional, in other words. In other words, if Navada Bhakti were, was just activity of the mundane senses, it could not be the function of function or dharma of the soul. If it were activity of the senses, it would not be the function of the soul. Indriyan, Indriya, Teshu, Vartan, Te. All the senses are engaged with, other, with their respective sense objects. You know, according to this logic of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, finite, the truth of the self, you know, huh? Oh, is it? Is it? You get chindu on tie, but you mean it? Um, The truth of the Self, Atmata, can be obtained by the knowledge of being free from the false ego, of being the doer. Jnanis, persons advanced in such knowledge, also discard all mundane objects to this very wisdom. However, the process of devotion, Bhakti, is not within the jurisdiction of mundane nitya or naimitic activities. Nor can it be separated from the soul through the culture of knowledge or wisdom. See, bhakti, we don't reject anything. We use in this service. See, that's how we transform. See, this is the secret. You know? Oh, this is the problem. I will stay away from it. You know? Difficult, you know? Again, it will draw back because in this world. That's why whatever we do, we do in this the service of Krishna, you know. That's why the surrender comes, you know. Um, Atmani. Devotional service to Bhagavan is not, is, an, is not an activity of the body and senses, as are other activities. And the body or senses. But how can a soul go to Vaikuntha if he is bereft of any activity of devotion to the Lord. Without bhakti, such a person is fit only for liberation. Without bhakti, liberation, you know, like middle, you know, border. See, Gopakumara might question, is there any fault to bhakti not being the function of the soul or atma, but rather an activity of the material senses like other duties? Is there any fault huh, to, if we think like that? Why couldn't a person replay in this verse, beginning with Anyebhya? They say, if the soul were to be, if the soul were to become cleansed of bhakti, activities of devotion, in the same way that it becomes cleansed of karma, fruitive activities performed in the body and senses, how could the soul be completely purified? And without becoming thoroughly purified, how could the soul enter Vaikuntha? Bereft of devotion, the soul would be unfit to enter that realm. It is possible, however, that soul who become cleansed of karma, that is, who has achieved freedom from desire, freedom from desire for the results of action, may be fit for liberation. Therefore, it is to be understood that bhakti is essential for attaining the spiritual realm of Vaikuntha. 
as evidenced by this reasoning this transcendental abode cannot be obtained through any mundane means it follows that bhakti being the process to attain that transcendental realm must also be transcendental see there is no other way. Huh? so no some people they argue like this devotion to the lord is also like a karmic activity like performing one's prescribed occupational duties right it appears like that you know you are cooking doing this doing that you know like any other anybody else doing it so how it is devotional but this can never be so this the, the personal no it will never be so this is an external conception not based on the underlying truth of bhakti although the term the term they are explaining this very nicely huh? although the term deha is used to refer both to the bodies of devotees who reside in vaikuntha and to the bodies made of five material elements nevertheless the first usage is transcendental second is material similarly although bhakti is independent of karma nevertheless due to the external perspective it is sometimes regarded as karma external perspective so they are you know, elaborating on this the execution of one's prescribed occupational duties or swadharma is mundane karmic activity you know prescribed occupational duties ha huh? is it Swadharma is mundane karmic activity. Similarly, can we not say that bhakti is also a particular type of karma? This is the question. Because we are also engaging, you know, our activity, living, they are doing this, cooking, or you know, the activity. Why couldn't the process reply? Devotional service performed with in, intimate feelings for Bhagwan. can never be a fruitive or mundane activity huh? intimate feelings for the lord like the execution of one prescribed occupational duties when you prescribe occupational duty what you are doing this on oh, my my you know duty there is nothing connection with thing on the uh, lord huh? this is because intimate and confidential service is not at all an activity of the material senses you know intimate confidential service is not material senses activity even if it appears to be a mundane activity from an external perspective factually it is not when the term bhakti karma meaning devotional activities devotional activities bhakti karma right you can term bhakti devotion karma activities huh? is used some people take it to be material bhakti however is not an activity of the mundane senses huh? so they are explaining this devotional service to bhagwan is the best of all virtuous activities meant for cleansing the consciousness you know some people might think like that this is the opinion of those who are adherents of philosophy known as mimamsa karma mimamsa vaikuntha parshadas speaking they are refuting this no that is not proper that is not right they say occasionally bhakti is called karma and it assumed to be material activity however this is only from an external perspective it is not based on actual truth tattva vichara there is an example in this regard he is giving an example just a deha deha meaning body right which body it can be sachidananda spiritual body or it may be made out of panch mahabhutas right uh 
So, similarly, the term karma is sometimes applied to bhakti, although it is different from the fruitive activities known as karma. Huh? So, it can deha can be body eternal, huh? eternality, knowledge, and bliss. Or for a body, five more, uh, five material elements, right? Similarly, for example, the money, right? Money meaning hmm, like a round thing, right? He, jewelry he used, huh? thing, jewel. It can be meaning jewel, can refer to both the spiritual wish fulfilling germ, you know, fulfilling germ. Chintamani and a jewel made of glass, right? Can also make out of glass, like a, right? Uh, jewel, uh, money, uh, and also chintamani, uh, wish fulfilling. Also, the word sattva indicates existence consisting of three modes of material nature and also shuddha tattva. The nature of Parabrahma, Shuddha Sattva, huh? with the support of entire existence, base of qualities of saintly person. So, Vaikunda Pasha continuing. You know? In the same way, one who sees with only an external perspective will see as karma both types of action. Mundane activities such as execution of one prescribed occupation of duties and the intimate service of the Lord. We will see as a karma, you know? but in reality, we are not. You know? So that's why it's very difficult to judge, you know, uh, especially if you have no knowledge of bhakti. You will, they will, oh no, is also another activity. You know. So, in Vaikuntha, time is up, I think. In Vaikuntha or any, anywhere else, a devotee may reside, a suitable body manifests of its own accord. This body and its senses are comprised of Eternity, knowledge, and bliss. After this, we will end. Huh? Um, so, it's very interesting, okay? It will, it will help us to understand what is devotion, sorry, what is bhakti. Huh? Um, bhakti, they are saying, why couldn't have, bhakti is not an object of the senses, with the function of the soul, and it manifests of its own accord in a pure heart. No? So, although it has been established that bhakti is self-manifest, self-manifest, someone might raise a doubt, saying that Shravana and Kirtana and the other aspects of bhakti are activities of the senses, is it not? Shravana and Kirtana. Huh? If this is so, then how can bhakti be regarded as transcendental and self manifest? To remove this doubt, the Vaikuntha associates speak this verse huh? Bhakta Nam. They say, whether a pure devotee resides in Vaikuntha or anywhere else, a suitable body comprised of Satchidananda naturally manifests. How does this transcendental body manifest? As bhakti arises, as bhakti, the five material elements is transformed and becomes like a body made of eternality, knowledge, and bliss. Just as iron trans transforms into gold by contact with a touchstone. Similarly, due to the manifestation of bhakti, the material body of the practicing devotee also becomes transcendent. Huh? Alternatively, it can be said that through the mercy potency of Sri Bhagavan, 
the material senses of the sadhaka can be spiritualized. It can additionally be understood that the Lord's potency, mercy potency, Krupa Shakti, first appears within the pure soul, then it manifests the form consisting of limbs, senses that are suitable for his service. This is a general overview. So, uh, Acha, time ho gaya. Uh, so we will our time is up. We'll continue this. Uh, maybe we'll elaborate for that. If you have any question. But uh, why I'm putting more time on this is this is this will clear up what is devotion and some doubts. It will make us strong. Okay. The whole idea is Nishta, you know, our faith should increase. You know. Our understanding of bhakti should increase. You know? And bhakti raivainam naiti, bhakti raivainam dasha, bhakti vasha purusha, bhakti reva purusha. You know, bhakti only only can bhakti we can go near the Lord, we can take darshan. Uh, only by bhakti will be attracted, will be controlled, you will be everything. Only bhakti can bring us auspiciousness. Uh, it can transform, you know, the things that we are going through, so many ups and downs in this material world, you know. So tolerate, try to tolerate it by chanting, by praying to the Lord, or spiritual lineage. Oh, Gurudev, oh, Param Gurudev, please. So that way it will give us strength huh? and never go on. And you are already spiritualized, okay? You see, it's like this. I'll give an example and then end. Suppose, Fan is rotating. Right? You turn off the switch. I think it immediately stops fan rot rotating. Gradually, right? Then it gradually comes down. Is it not? Same way. We are already cut off from the material. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so but it seems like, oh, then. but you know, you are cut off, but it's actually gradually, <laughs> like that, gradually it will come down. Okay. So, Krishna will never, okay, never give up on. Little service, yeah, done, chanting, you know. I tell you, that's why he says, if you take one step towards him, you will take thousand steps. But with one step, you can cover the entire three worlds. You know, right? Remember? From one I covered by one step. You know? Oh, imagine thousands of steps. Bye. So, let's have faith that you will never. And you can see who protected Draupati. Understand? Who protected Gajendra? So, like that, so many things. He's always there. That's why you can see they are, they are he's sending Vaikuntha, associate Vaikuntha everywhere. You remember last time he said? They are coming, entering different Brahmanda. You know why? Like in the time of Ajamila, you know, unknowingly he remembered the Lord's name, called his son. No, 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 no. Ah, see. So, uh, in the question of giving up attachment. Even that is also, you know, gradually go away. Huh? Uh, see, 
the disease is more than 75% cured, if you know that we are diseased, okay, <laughs> you know, to recognize, that if we recognize that we are diseased, then disease is already gone, <laughs> is already taken care of, like that. So, vancha kalpata rubhyasya krupa sindhu bhyayavacha patita nam pavane Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Dandavat Pranam to everyone please forgive me for me Dhanabhat Params Gurudev, thank you.